As we reported last month, five banks failed in 2023. That's not unusual, but there are plenty of signs that it's gonna get worse from here on in. So what can you do to protect your money? Well, I'm glad you asked. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. If you've been financially conscious through the past three or four years, you've probably noticed that the American economy isn't doing great. Despite what the gaslighting media would have you believe, food prices are rising, as are fuel prices. And rent, more than ever before, is too damn high. And wages aren't keeping up. Inflation and wages are always in a race like the tortoise and the hare. Only this time, the hare shot the tortoise in the kneecap, locked it in a bear trap, and didn't bother taking a nap. In addition, according to the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, the share of Americans experiencing financial distress due to credit card debt is back up to 2008 levels. So yeah, things are getting harder and harder for the average person in the US. And to top it off, 2023 saw five banks fail with plenty of evidence, there will be more. If you're curious about that evidence, we did an episode on it a month ago. I'll put a link in the description. Now, none of this is good news for most people's wallets, and everybody can feel the pinch of inflation in their monthly grocery bill. Even Jeff Bezos is like, panda burgers have gotten too expensive. I guess I'll have to save money by living off rhinoceros tacos. But here's the real question. What can the average Joe do to protect his assets from bank failures and inflation? Well, never fear, America Uncovered is here with some options. This is not financial advice. Option one, divide your assets. The FDIC insures bank accounts up to $250,000. So even if a bank fails, any account worth $250,000 or less is covered by the government. On paper, anyway. There's about $22 trillion in the entire US banking sector and just $225 billion at the FDIC. So if every bank failed at once, the FDIC simply wouldn't be able to cover it all. But that's extremely unlikely. So if you're worried about bank failures, the most obvious solution is to not have more than $250,000 in a single bank account at a specific bank. And if you'd like to know how to get more than $250,000 in savings, so would I. You can legally divide your assets into $250,000 chunks and put one chunk into Morgan Stanley, one into Chase, one into Wells Fargo, etc. Or, if you're an utter masochist, one into Bank of America. Unfortunately, this option doesn't do anything to help against inflation, since your money would be just sitting in a bank account earning a minuscule percentage of yearly interest. The Federal Reserve has a target inflation of 2%. Meaning, unless your bank gives you more than 2% yearly interest on your money, you're not saving, you're losing money. What a system. Option two, use credit unions. Credit unions are an alternative to the traditional banking system, and they have several advantages for depositors. First, credit unions are still regulated under FDR's original New Deal legislation from 90 years ago. Unlike banks, which were stripped of New Deal regulations during the Clinton and Obama administrations. As such, credit unions aren't legally allowed to take as many risks with depositors' money, which makes them inherently less likely to fail than banks. Think of credit unions as someone who occasionally likes playing a conservative hand of blackjack, while major banks are degenerate gamblers that even bet on whether or not flights arrive on time. Second, credit unions are organized as co-ops rather than corporations. So when you deposit money at one, you actually become a member rather than a customer. Members of credit unions are part owners and therefore have the right to vote on credit union policies, sort of like a stockholder of a publicly traded company. Meanwhile, banks are beholden to their corporate shareholders. Third, credit unions are almost exclusively nonprofit financial institutions, so they're far more interested in protecting their members' assets than taking risks to try and get the biggest return for shareholders. And lastly, since members are part owners, credit unions are significantly less likely to give in to extrajudicial government pressure to debank their members, as happened to a certain trucker convoy in Canada in 2022. Who could have predicted that one day corporate banks and the government would combine to politically repress the populace? All right, Thomas Jefferson, considering he said this 200 years ago, we probably should have seen it coming. 
The biggest downside to credit unions is that they are frequently limited to a single state. So if you travel a lot, it can be inconvenient. However, as the world gets more and more connected to the internet, more and more credit unions are making shared branching agreements with out-of-state credit unions. So that problem is solved. The other downside is that credit union accounts have the same problem as bank accounts when it comes to keeping up with inflation. Most credit unions pay around 2% yearly interest on account balances though, so at least you won't be falling behind. Option three, use investment accounts. With the rise of the internet, investing isn't just for rich people anymore. There are tons of free online brokerages that offer investment accounts and you can start an account with $100 or less. If you're a total newbie, the SoFi investment app comes highly recommended by loads of financial websites, including Business Insider. It's an easy to learn app with a large selection of in-app educational articles that help beginners learn about financial topics. Everyone has to start somewhere and no, this episode is not sponsored by them. Just don't enable margin investing or options trading. Margin investing puts you in a position to end up actually owing more money than you put in if your trade goes against you. Seriously, don't do it. It's the worst investment you can make behind buying Madam Web on Laserdisc. Options trading is the quickest way novice investors destroy their accounts. You can literally lose everything you put in within minutes. Again, don't do it. If you're gonna just throw all your money away, you might as well do it on something you'd enjoy, like Panda Burgers. By the way, I'm not a financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. But don't do it. It's Kind of like how I don't need to be a doctor to tell you not to stick your eyeball on a belt sander. Now, depending on your personal risk tolerance, you can control each trade yourself or buy shares of a professionally managed index fund or exchange traded fund. Some brokerages will even manage investments for you for a small fee. Or safest and easiest of all, you can buy dividend paying stocks and regularly collect a share of company profits as one of many co-owners for doing nothing at all. That is what the wealthy do with their money. Since stocks change value constantly, literally second to second, the stock market tends to do a good job keeping up with inflation or even beating it, as long as whatever stocks you own increase in value by at least 2% a year or have a high enough annual dividend yield, you're good. It's time to even up this race and put the hair in the bear trap for a change. Option four, use money market funds. Money market funds are similar to investment accounts, but they're professionally managed and only contain treasury bills, or T-bills for short. Just like an investment account, you can get started with as little as $100. They usually pay a higher interest rate than a bank or credit union account, and like an oldest son whose father died so he now has to be the man of the house and help raise his siblings and tend the crops, they mature quickly. For example, as of January 2nd, 2024, according to Forbes, Bank of America pays its customers 0.01% interest per year on money in a savings account. Meanwhile, as of March 8, 2024, the US Treasury pays a minimum 4.94% interest per year on money used to purchase treasury bills. Additionally, because they're fast maturing, it's easy to turn T-bills into cash if you need to withdraw some money for quick use. Money market funds typically beat the Fed's 2% target since Nobody would ever lend to the federal government if they would lose money doing it. Judging by the debt, the federal government could probably use some investment advice of their own. The only real ways a money market fund could end up screwing you is if the US Treasury defaults on bill payments, the US dollar experiences hyperinflation, or if the federal government collapses after badly losing war. Of course, if any of those things happen, everyone is pretty much financially ruined anyway, so they're not really worth considering as risk variables in this instance. Financially, that is, for people with constant anxiety, enjoy those new fears to keep you up at night. Option five, buy notes or bonds. Saving notes and bonds are offered to the public by cities, states, the US Treasury, most large corporations, and foreign governments. They're generally considered pretty safe investments, often pay decent interest compared to a bank or credit union account, and usually beat inflation. Plus, they come in a wide variety of values, so you can pick them up for as little as $25 each. Unlike T-bills though, notes and bonds have maturity dates ranging between two and 30 years. So they're only really useful for long-term financial planning. The biggest downside is that like banks, the entities issuing the bonds can also fail or go bankrupt, though that risk is less likely for large well-managed issuers. 
Last year, the U.S. debt credit rating was downgraded for only the second time in the nation's history. You can buy bonds directly from the issuer, but if you're intimidated by the rather archaic bond market structure, you can also use your handy investment app to buy shares of exchange-traded funds or exchange-traded notes that hold bonds and get a dividend for doing nothing at all. Don't you just love capitalism? Option six, buy commodities. It's relatively easy for most people to buy physical commodities and store them later for sale or use. Almost anyone can buy bags of dried beans, grains, or sugar from a local grocery store or online, and purchasing physical precious metals like copper, gold, or silver is also pretty easy to do. Since most commodities have real-world uses, they generally have value, even when the zombie hordes arise to feast on your flesh. The biggest downside of commodities is that it takes physical space in your home or business to keep especially securely. A high-quality safer vault is necessary if you want to securely keep gold and silver bullion in your home, though most banks and some credit unions offer on-site safe deposit boxes for rent at reasonable prices. Obviously, such security measures are only appropriate for small commodities, like metal ingots or sacks of grain. Large commodities, like barrels of crude oil, tanks of natural gas, or live cattle, are simply too big for most people to practically store without a warehouse or barn. Also, and again, I'm no expert, but you probably shouldn't store cattle in safes. They're not fans of the dark, or, you know, suffocating. If you aren't interested in having to actually store physical property, ETFs also exist for many commodities. Alternatively, if you're rich enough, you can always just buy a huge hollow building and fill it with mountains of gold coins like Scrooge McDuck. Just don't try to swim in it. Option seven, buy real estate. If you have enough dough lying around, you can always buy real estate. Land values change, but land always has value. And if nothing else, you can always grow commodities on it. Real estate's advantage is that it's extremely unlikely to become literally worthless. It can't go bankrupt like a company, and as long as there are legally protected property rights and people who need to live and work somewhere, it will retain at least some value, regardless of currency strength. That being said, real estate is probably the most expensive option we've listed so far, so it's very likely out of reach for most people. Sorry about that. In today's market, I can't even afford to buy a house in Monopoly, not even on Mediterranean Avenue, despite being undefeated in beauty contests. But there's hope. As with bonds and commodities, financial institutions also exist for buying shares of real estate. These are called real estate investment trusts, or REITs. Yes, that's correct, you can purchase shares of real estate using nothing but an investment account. Not sure if you can do that with railroads, though. Option eight, buy currency. Cryptocurrencies are their own ball of wax. They have desire-driven values like luxury commodities such as wine and fine art. However, unlike wine and fine art, cryptocurrencies don't exist in the physical world, they're purely digital. Like my buddy's girlfriend back in college. Cryptocurrency's primary advantage is that its blockchain technology is decentralized, so it's hard for anyone, including the government, to control it. You can buy cryptocurrency from an exchange and upload it to a crypto wallet. Your investment app will come in handy there, though again, not financial advice. And not dating advice either. Option nine, sit on cash. That's it, just store physical cash. For thousands of years, people have been putting money into boxes or jars, then burying them in their yards under their favorite childhood trees or on some remote island. Since your cash actually exists in the form of physical paper notes and metal coins, it can't be subject to a bank failure. Unfortunately, holding piles of cash generates no interest whatsoever, so this is one of the worst things you could possibly do to protect your money from inflation. And fires, since cash is really flammable. Option 10, be poor. And finally, if you simply don't have more than $250,000 to your name, you can't lose more than $250,000 in a bank failure. Whoever said there were no benefits to poverty? And you thought I was joking when I said I was a savvy investor. Joking aside, the sad truth is that during a period of currency collapse, everyone has a lot more to worry about on a day-to-day -day basis than what to do with their now worthless money and how to get more of it. Because at the end of the day, cash is only colored paper. Wonderfully flammable colored paper. Before we end the video, we're legally obligated to say that none of what we said in this video is financial advice. 
You have to decide for yourself what you want to do with your money. No one affiliated with America Uncovered received payment from any entity discussed, nor are we specifically recommending any particular financial institution, ticker symbol, or cryptocurrency to invest in. Thanks, American legal system. We're just trying to help you be more informed because you're going to need to stretch your dollars as best you can since, more than ever before, the rent is still too damn high. Thanks, inflation. And do you want to know how your subconscious drives you? Learn all about what Carl Jung called the shadow in the latest episode of my new show, Deep Thoughts While Gaming. Thanks for watching. We couldn't do this show without you. Your contributions on Patreon are how we keep the lights on. So click that orange button to head over to Patreon. You can contribute a dollar per episode or even set a monthly limit to keep your costs low so that you can have more money to purchase cryptocurrency. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.